Hello and welcome to the arcade. You know, when we were kids, getting sick was sometimes pretty great. Depending on the severity of the sickness, you might get the chance to stay home, stay inside, watch TV, and of course, play some video games. As a kid, getting just sick enough to be told by your parents that you have to stay inside, but not quite sick enough to have to go to the doctor, was sometimes the best thing you never knew you always needed. Just a nice little break from reality with no responsibilities at all except for just get better. But now as an adult, every time I get sick, it hits me like a ton of bricks. I will typically barely have the energy to do anything, let alone play video games. And then I typically recover within a matter of like 48 hours. So then I'm fully back to normal again with no excuse to spend the whole day playing games. So it's right back to the grind. But there are still those magical times when you do have just enough energy to turn on a game and play for a bit. When you can be uninterrupted and left alone to the joys of those virtual worlds that we all love to visit when we're sick or just really tired. So today, since I'm still sick, I figured I'd talk about the games that I like to play when I'm too sick and too tired to do anything else. Number 1. Stardew Valley Stardew Valley is one of those games that got me back into gaming as a hobby when I had stopped playing games for about three months or so. It just felt so different from everything else. It has a cozy, calm, and inviting atmosphere that makes it so easy to get lost in. First of all, there's nothing that you have to do. Sure, there are goals for you and quests from other people from the town, but really there's nothing that you're forced to do. There's really no pressure at all, you're completely free to play the game how you want to play and at your own pace. People call Stardew Valley a farming game, but I don't really like farming as much as I like mining. Sure, they're pretty similar when you break it down, but I just prefer the adventure of visiting the caves, looking for special ores and other cool items. Making my way all the way to the bottom of the mines was one of the first major accomplishments I had in the game, and I still go to the mines every time I play. But if you're feeling sick or really tired, you could just spend some time reorganizing your chests or redoing the layout of your crops, maybe do some fishing or other type of farming that doesn't require much thought or effort. Sometimes it's nice to just exist in this world for a little while. Enjoy the sights, the sounds, music, and interaction with quirky NPCs. It's a great time and it always makes me feel better when I'm feeling down. Number 2 a short hike. When you've got a bit more energy, but you're still not ready for a high stakes adventure, a short hike is the perfect game. In this game, there's definitely a great sense of exploration and adventure, but there's no enemies or hazards that can kill you. You're completely free to run and fly around anywhere you want to go, and you can play the whole game at your own pace. But even at a slow pace, the game probably won't take you more than 4 or 5 hours. It's really short, but really satisfying with a great ending. And once you're done, you have total freedom to fly around the whole island with the tons of golden feathers you've amassed while playing through the game. Plus, the amazing atmosphere and vibe of this game and the soundtrack too are just huge mood boosters. It's so inviting and enjoyable to pop into this game now and then and explore the island for a little while. Even if you aren't trying to beat the game, there's enough to do and enough things to find to make it fun no matter what. Number 3, New Super Mario Bros. Taking it back a bit, sometimes when we're sick, a hearty dose of nostalgia can do the trick to make us feel better, at least for a little bit. And for me, not many games do it better than New Super Mario Bros. My brother, sister, and I got our DS for Christmas in the same year it released, and we got the one game that I think most people did, Super Mario 64 DS. That game was a ton of fun, but I feel that the DS really came into its own when New Super Mario Bros. came out. This was actually the first 2D Mario game that I ever beat, and it's one for me that is really fun to go back to now and then. Especially when I'm sick or tired because of how simple and easy the game tends to be. Some of that ease is just because of my familiarity with the game, but I do feel like it's a great one to pick up for newcomers to the Mario series. Now, I'm sure that some people may pick a different Mario game as their comfort game, but for me, a 2D one makes the most sense because they're typically easier and a little bit simpler. Also, this one in particular has a lot of nostalgic value for me because of all the hours I spent playing it by myself, with my brother and sister, and my best friend. 
It's just a good, solid 2D Mario platformer, and it doesn't really need to be anything more than that. Number 4, Golden Sun. Now, I'm not that far into my current playthrough of Golden Sun, but I figured I'd include a JRPG on this list for a couple reasons. First, the fact that it's turn-based means that you have extra time in deciding what to do next, and you don't necessarily ever have to have any quick reactions or split-second decisions. Just sit back, relax, take your time with the combat, and soak up the awesome storyline. On top of the combat and story being good, Golden Sun also has an incredible soundtrack and probably the best graphics of any game on the Game Boy Advance. This game has such a striking style that still looks good to this day. On this topic though, you could probably pick any JRPG, aside from the ones that have bullet hell or action elements. Maybe one of the Pokemon games would work well too. Early Final Fantasy games or Dragon Quest games would probably fit into this category too. Number 5, Tetris. You know, when you're sick, sometimes your brain can feel extra foggy. That makes playing complex games like strategy games or souls likes too much of a challenge. Some puzzle games can even be too challenging. But one that still feels great to play, even when you're sick, is Tetris. Sure, it can start to get intense when you reach the higher levels and stuff, but if you're playing it while you're sick, you probably wouldn't care about that anyway. It just feels nice to play and enjoy at a slow pace, not caring if you don't crack your current high score or not. The gameplay is so satisfying regardless of how well you play or how high of a score you can rack up. I own a few different versions of Tetris, but my favorite one is definitely the original Game Boy release, which is perfect for playing in bed. I also like the NES version a lot, and of course the browser-based one is a great time as well if you're feeling up to being on the computer. Number 6, Skyrim. One of the best things about Skyrim when you're feeling a little under the weather is the sheer amount of freedom it offers. Whether you're too drained to leave your bed or just want to escape reality, Skyrim lets you sink into its world at your own pace. There's no rush, you can choose when to engage in quests or just wander around aimlessly, which is perfect for when your brain's feeling foggy. The flexibility of this game is a big plus when you're sick too. You can customize your character to suit whatever vibe you're feeling that day, from their race to their skills, and play the game any way you want. Whether you want to be a sneaky archer or a fireball throwing mage, there's no pressure to do anything specific. Skyrim lets you be as active or as lazy as you want. If you're not up for high energy action, there are plenty of low stakes activities like crafting, exploring, or just getting lost in the game's stunning landscapes. While the main storyline is exciting and cinematic, the real joy comes from the side quests and random adventures you stumble upon. You don't need to stick to any one path, just explore, interact with NPCs, or even take a break and relax in one of the many towns or villages. The world of Skyrim is so massive and varied, you can play for hours without repeating the same experience. Plus, if you've got extra time to kill while you're recuperating, the expansions add even more depth and content. Skyrim is perfect for sick days because it doesn't demand anything from you. You set your own pace, and whether you want to dive into combat or just explore the scenery, the game makes it all feel rewarding. It's the ultimate escape when you're stuck at home, letting you lose yourself in its world while your body rests. So there you go, my favorite games to play when I'm just too sick or too tired to do anything productive. While we're all different and prefer different things when we're sick, I bet that most of us probably share at least one or two comfort games. I'm looking at you Stardew Valley and Skyrim fans, but let me know if I'm wrong. What games do you like to play when you're sick? I would love to hear from you. And as always, until next time, thank you so much for watching.